Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast, Labor Day edition. The first thing you may have noticed is that I am in a different location. I'm in my office rather than in the man cave. And the reason for that is where I normally sit to record the video podcast is directly below our laundry room. And my wife is doing laundry right now, which means the dryer is running, and you would probably be hearing that picked up through my microphone, which might be a distraction. So instead, I am here in the office. Originally, I had planned on releasing my interview with Fan from Heavenly Fan today, but I didn't know if the whole Labor Day holiday would you know, mean more views or less views or, or what. So instead, I will be releasing that next Monday. So that's coming very soon. I've probably got enough topics on this little sheet of paper here for two podcasts. Um, we're just going to kind of go for it, and when it feels like it's time to stop, we'll stop. I'm going to start, though, by talking about this last weekend, which would have been... Yeah, it was this last weekend. I, I've been filming a lot of videos today for future release, and it's got me totally screwed up on dates. But this past weekend, sort of as an end-the-summer thing, the family, and by the family I mean... My wife, Connor, Jaden, Colton, and I went to a water park in Lake Geneva. It's, it was an indoor sort of water park, kind of a small hotel thing. And it was just, you know, it was a good time. It wasn't very crowded or anything like that. But uh, a couple of things that happened that I'll let you know about. The first is, I think, I think this may be the first time I've been to a water park since losing the weight that I lost. And... It's funny, when, when you go keto and you lose some weight and you experience the various benefits of keto, lots of times it doesn't dawn on you right away until you have sort of that eureka moment where you say, you're like, oh, my knees don't hurt anymore. I don't have inflammation or, you know, wow, that skin tag that I used to have is gone. But what I noticed is as I was climbing up the probably three or four flights of stairs holding a double inner tube, to go down a water slide, I got to the top and I wasn't even breathing heavy. Normally, you know, back in my pre-keto, a lot heavier days, I would have to stop halfway up and just, you know, have a breather. So it's really kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a wild sensation when you finally get to that point where you're like, whoa, wait a second, I, this is what healthy feels like. This is fun. And I think one of the reasons why I haven't gone to a water park in a few years is just my recollection of going was sort of miserable because you're always climbing upstairs to go down water slides or tubes or, or whatever. And I would just be, I'd be so winded and just felt awful and out of shape. And I was used to having to wear a swim shirt because I didn't want to, all my fat being seen. So this was overall, it was, it was a positive experience. We also went out to a, a pizza restaurant that evening and I broke keto. It's been, I think the last time I was out of keto would have been mid-October of last year. So it's been 11 months. And I just thought, you know, what the heck, we're on vacation. We've got these wood fire pizzas. I'm going to have some pizza. So I did. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things, I think, when you break keto, I don't, I don't like calling it a cheat day. Uh, I, and I also, I'm to the point now, I think, in my keto journey that when I periodically break keto, I don't feel this big sense of guilt or remorse or anything about it. I, I kind of go into it knowing that there are going to be consequences. I'm going to put on a few pounds. I'm probably going to feel sluggish for a couple of days. And, and both were true. But two days later, I'm back in ketosis. My weight was back where it was before I started, and I'm feeling fine. So the moral of this story is, periodically, if you go out of keto, and for me, it's, you know, maybe a once a year, twice a year sort of thing, just get back on the horse. It's, it's one of those things, there's no point in beating yourself up over. It's like missing a workout or something like that. You can't let it weigh on you. Just get back, get back into the groove and, and keto on. Now, you'll notice when I said the family went to the water park that I didn't include Courtney in that. Well, that's because Courtney didn't come along. She's actually on another trip. She went to Hawaii. She's running in a marathon in Hawaii. But there's some news related to Courtney as well. She has been going to school at the University of Wisconsin-Platteville, which is the 
western side of Wisconsin, not that far away from Dubuque, Iowa. And she has decided that she's going to move back homeward, not actually home in this house. She'll probably be uh, living with some friends on the east side of Milwaukee and taking her classes online, at still at Platteville, and finishing online. She just, it was too small of a town for her, and she missed her friends, and um, I, you know, it's understandable. So she is moving back into this neck of the woods instead of being a little over two hours away. She's probably going to be, I don't know, 40 minutes away. And I think that's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, I think, having the family all together to get, you know, together together again, you know, probably a couple times a month, I think, on, on weekends and, and things like that, where we have Connor and Jaden and Colton and Courtney and my mother-in-law. And it just, we're family sort of people. And I've missed that family experience. I've missed getting us all together and playing games, whether that's yard games, um, board games, video games, whatever it is. And I guess another offshoot of that is you may start seeing more of Courtney again in some videos, like review vid videos and, and maybe even some cooking videos. So I know there are a lot of Courtney fans out there, so that is probably good news for all of you. The next topic I want to cover is skepticism. And it seems to me that I've recorded uh, this topic before in a previous podcast. The problem is very often I will record enough stuff in a podcast that I need to, I need to cut out significant chunks. And I, I just, I don't recall what actually made it onto YouTube and what didn't. So if this winds up being a, a repeat, I apologize, but I tend to be a skeptic just by nature. I used to not be. I used to be very gullible. I used to believe just about everything. But as I have gotten older and as I have been taken advantage of, as I have blindly believed certain things that I found out not to be true, I've become more skeptical by nature. That doesn't mean I'm cynical. That doesn't mean that I believe that people are necessarily lying to me or trying to take advantage of me. It just means that I like to experience things for myself. I need to prove it to myself. So when I hear various claims, whether it's about keto or carbs or this or that, or you know whatever it may be, I wanna test it on myself. A supplement, for example. This is why I do a lot of the reviews that I do with glucose testing is because I'm skeptical of some of the claims. And if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm happy to admit that I'm wrong. You know, in the case of some of these resistant starch things, it would be wonderful to find out that I, I could eat, I could prepare rice in a way that I could eat sushi. That's something I miss. And the reason I bring this up, there's actually two. One is I continue to get these accusations that, especially on the video on the freezing bread and then thawing and toasting it, that I'm calling Dr. Mandel a liar or... Uh, you know, whatever I'm calling him. I'm not. I am not calling him that. I'm saying he did this video quoting a study. I'm skeptical of the study. I'm going to test it. And I tested it, and I did, in fact, see that this process decreased the glucose spike. And I admitted to it. I admitted that I came in kind of smug, and now I'm not because I learned something. To me, skepticism is just, it's, it's important. And it's important that you be skeptical as well, that you not blindly follow any claims. That when I do a test, you should be skeptical, not that I'm lying or trying to pull one over on you with the results, because I'm not, but you should be skeptical about whether you are gonna experience the same thing and thus test yourself. So that's, that's reason number one that I bring it up. Reason number two is one of the things I wonder about is intermittent fasting. Is there truly a benefit to it? Because it seems like within the keto community, there has been a, a significant correlation between people doing keto and people doing intermittent fasting. I also wonder how many of these people that believe that they're doing intermittent fasting are actually doing intermittent fasting because of some of the comments that I get. People talking about, well, you know, I get up and I have some coffee with uh, heavy cream or MCT oil in it or butter 
and then I don't eat until 6 p.m. or whatever you know their window is. And I don't know that I could call that intermittent fasting if you're taking in calories. Anyhow, I have some days done the true intermittent fasting where I will only have tea or black coffee up until 4 p.m., even as late as 6 p.m. on any given day. There have been other days where I'll just I'll have some coffee with some cream in it, and that's it. That's all I'll have until I eventually have dinner. Sometimes my fasting or fasting window, depending on whether I have cream in my coffee or not, is it, sometimes it's 16 hours, sometimes it's 18 hours, sometimes it's 20 hours. And I find that I'm doing it not necessarily for weight loss or autophagy, if, if you can achieve a autophagy with such a short fasting window, I don't know. I do it just because I don't really feel that hungry uh, anymore until later on in the day. I've just, I've kind of conditioned my body to not eat until mid-afternoon or, or later. But I recently started rereading the book For Our Body by Timothy Ferris. And one of the things that he advocates in that is eating a fairly high protein, fairly high fat meal within 30 minutes of waking. And that by doing so, you will achieve fat loss while maintaining or even increasing muscle mass. So as a skeptic, I'm skeptical both of, is there really a benefit to doing intermittent fasting? I'm also skeptical of Timothy Ferris's claims that I should eat upon waking. So I'm gonna try that for the next 30 days. I realize I haven't done a 30-day challenge, and I don't really consider this a challenge. This is more like just an experiment for 30 days. So I'm gonna try this out for 30 days. I've got my starting weight, my starting body fat, my starting muscle mass. Um, I'll figure out if there's any other sort of metrics that I, I mean, I capture every metric pretty much because I'm a data geek, but we'll see how these things behave over the next 30 days, and then I will report back. I'll probably have a special video on that and let you know. At one point, it was probably a year or so ago, I had done a segment in one of my podcasts about the, th the things you can expect to see in any article about keto, you know, from the mainstream media or uh, just internet sites. Sort of like a, a keto bingo. You know, can you check the box on each one of these things? I think, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what all of them were. I think one of them is talking about how restrictive keto is, talking about keto flu, what else? Uh, unsustainable, you get that a lot. Uh, horrible for you in terms of cholesterol or whatever. They may throw out something about it being good for epileptics. You know, that's like the little, you know, the one positive thing that they'll say about it. They'll mention a couple of celebrities, you know, maybe Halle Berry, I think Jennifer Aniston maybe does keto or Courtney Cox. One of the friends, uh, ladies does it. Uh, they'll also mention, uh, Jenna Jameson, a porn star and not the sort of person I really want to have as the face of keto. If we're being honest, what else is there? Uh, you know, maybe keto breath. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else. Well, I tell you what, I, I had an article show up in my Google News Feed just the other day from health.com. And I'm going to pull it up right now and, and look at it. It's the seven side effects of going keto. The low carb, high fat plan promises quick weight loss, but health experts worry about these side effects and complications. You know, then it gives you the real dumbed down uh, definition of keto. The ketogenic diet, also known as the keto diet or just keto, is a big thing in weight loss plans. Oh, the other one is uh, calling it a fad. I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet, but I bet we will. Touted by celebs like Halle Berry, Kourtney Kardashian, and Jenna Jameson, naturally. The diet involves cutting way back on carbohydrates to 50 grams a day or less to help the body achieve a state of ketosis in which it burns fat rather than sugar for energy. Uh, so somewhat truthful. Uh, helpful in treating epilepsy. 
The other interesting argument that they make, and I see this right here, is they'll talk about the lack of data around the keto diet. So you can't say anything positive about it because there's a lack of data, but you can say all kinds of negative things about it, even though there's a lack of data. So it uh, talks about a review in Frontiers in Nutrition, saying that without more long-term data on safety, it appears that the risks associated with this diet may outweigh the benefits. Uh, but, 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 scrolling down, so the keto flu talks about that. That's just, you know, that's electrolytes. In fact, I had the keto flu when I went vegan for eight weeks. Exact same symptoms of the keto flu. I think just you put your body through any significant dietary change, it's, it's going to react in that sort of way. Um, diarrhea. Hmm. Don't know that I have that uh, especially. Reduced athletic performance. I find this really uh, an interesting claim because as I look at my overall just makeup here, uh, including body composition, not only is body fat way down, but muscle mass is up. And as I said before, you know, my cardio is way better. I'm climbing stairs without getting winded. Uh, so I would argue kind of against that whole athletic thing. Ketoacidosis. It is, I think, fairly hard to get into a state of ketoacidosis. I don't know in terms of if you are a type 1 diabetic, if this is a risk. So if you are, let me know down in the comments below if that's a legitimate risk. Number five is weight regain. Um, now, this is not an issue with the diet. It's the issue that it's not sustainable. So you go off the diet. Um, it's an issue, it says, from this particular registered dietitian. <laughs> it's an issue with any fad diet, of course. But it seems extra common with ketosis. The quote is, when people tell me they want to try it because their friends lost weight, I always tell them, just watch. I almost guarantee that they'll gain it all back. It's been a solid three, three and a half years I've been doing keto. Uh, in fact, I think I'm looking better now than I did a year ago. But who knows? Maybe this article's right. Less muscle mass, decreased metabolism. Again, I've got the data I have put on muscle mass. I have gotten stronger. I have put on inches where I want to put on inches. You know, I'm going to say, just based on personal experience, that one's not true. Increased risk of heart disease and diabetes. How are you going to increase your risk of diabetes by consuming fewer carbs? I, I don't know. And in terms of the, the heart disease, I believe it was in 2018, even the American Heart Association and I think the, uh, what is it, the Journal of American College of Cardiologists both came out and said that there's not a correlation between cholesterol and heart disease. I'm, it was one of those two, possibly both. I think Dr. Ken Berry has got a video on that. Um, also pro probably Rob Saivez. I think I've seen videos by both of them referencing articles saying that it's been admitted that there's not a correlation, yet go to your doctor and see if he or she knows that. Probably not. So yeah, that article, pretty much your cookie cutter sort of article about keto. And I think this, it would be laughable except for the fact that people read these things. Our family, our friends, they read this stuff and they just soak it up. They're not skeptics. They, they, are, they aren't trying it out for themselves. And they're looking at us feeling great, looking great, losing weight, losing inflammation, and yet they still want to, they want to crap all over it. You know, it's keto. It's, it's awful. It's filthy. You're killing yourself. I don't care if you look better or feel better. What you're doing is horrible. And it just, it, it frustrates me because even though there isn't, let's say there isn't long-term data about the effects of keto, I think we have sufficient data about the standard American diet and what low fat has done in terms of increasing rates of obesity and heart disease in this country and globally. So yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know when we get past this with keto. At what point does the media and these supposed health organizations start realizing that maybe low carb at the very least is the way we should be eating and, and quit eating all of this sugar and just other inflammatory crap. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm going to step off my soapbox now and put a bow on this podcast. I will say, though, if you're interested in seeing or hearing more of me, I don't know if you are, but if you are, I'm going to link down below in the description to an interview. I was on Carnivore's Angels channel. Yeah, Carnivore's, yeah, it's a double possessive. Carnivore's Angels channel. I was, I was on an interview with Amy from Carnivore's Angel, and we talked for 40, 45 minutes. So if you're interested in hearing more of my voice or seeing my face, you can do either. I mean, you could plug your ears and see my face or cover your eyes and just hear my voice or just watch and listen. There will be a link down in the description so you can check that out. That's going to be it for this podcast. As always, thank you for watching or listening. Have a great week.